Well, it's terribly worrying. Um, I know that it has sent a chill down the spines of everybody who lives in this city because Mumbai is the financial capital. It's, um, you know, second most important city in the country, arguably. Um, it's also a, a city that boasts of having a very strong and efficient and effective police force. And here we have, a, you know, a prominent, extremely influential individual uh, who already had police protection because he had already received threats to his life. And in spite of being protected by the police and having a protection detail around him, he was gunned down in his car. Um, and this has been extremely upsetting because now people are questioning law and order all over the city and the state. Do police have a motive? Well, the police haven't confirmed what the motive is if they have found one. Um, as one would expect, the investigators at this point are holding their cards fairly close to their chest. Uh, they have named um, at least four people, arrested three, uh, and they are on the lookout for more. Uh, the three who have been arrested have been presented before court. Uh, the police have said to the court that uh, they want to hold custody for as long as possible because they need to know um, what the entire plan was and if there were other people People who were targets, especially like you said, given that we have an important election in the state coming up in less than a month. But local media is also reporting at the same time that the suspects in custody are from a gang run by notorious criminal figure Lawrence Bishnoi. Uh, what can you tell us about him? Because he's currently in prison. Lawrence Bishnoi himself is, is in jail, uh, but runs this, uh, you know, this sort of gangster operation from prison, it runs across not just India, but outside of India as well. His main spokesperson who um, who speaks on behalf of this gang doesn't even live in India. Uh, there was one post on social media put up by one individual taking credit uh, for this, um, you know, for this attack and for this killing. And um, the, uh, from the police and the local reports, from what we understand, the two people who were given the contract to actually kill Baba Siddiqui were given that contract by a member of the Lawrence Bishnoi gang, whom they met, from what we understand, while they themselves were in jail. Um, and they met this individual. There's one report that actually suggests that the um, you know, the entire contract was no more than 300,000 rupees, which means that each of them were making about 50,000 rupees, um, which is a really shockingly small amount of money to take um, to take a life in this fashion. Yeah. And, and what are the political implications of this killing, given that he had defected from the uh, state opposition to the current government? Well, if we take a look at the political implications on the election at hand, uh, I believe it's definitely going to hurt the current government. Uh, to begin with, like I said, it draws a, a massive shadow over law and order and over the ability of this government to simply run the administration as they claim to have been doing very well. This, in terms of votes, this will, remember the, the BJP that, uh, that is part of the current government that runs the state of Maharashtra was hoping that uh, Baba Siddiqui would bring in the minority Muslim vote that is a vote that, you know, quite clearly would have been alienated by this, uh, you know, by this incident and uh, would have left the minority Muslim community in the city of Mumbai and perhaps other parts of Maharashtra feeling targeted uh, because he was a very prominent member of, of the community. He was a celebrated member of the community, very close to Bollywood superstars. So he's someone we're used to seeing in public life for many, many years. Very, uh, you know, like I said, prominent and flamboyant member of the community who was considered uh, to be sort of a secular card holder, um, uh, a sort of champion of secularism in Bandra uh, and in, uh, you know, in larger Mumbai. So this does not, um, you know, help the case of the local arm of the BJP in Maharashtra in wooing voters on the other side uh, of the Muslim community or, you know, of secular people who consider themselves secular. And of course, the state election is coming up um, in, in an environment where there was this major lapse in the security. Now, the government's promised an inquiry. What are we expecting to hear in the coming days and weeks? Well, we're 
were expecting to, to see far more arrests. Um, and of course, with every uh, arrest and when, whenever one of them is presented in court, we'll hear from the police a little bit about what they expect this person's role has been, because that's when the police makes uh, or, or the prosecution makes an argument for bail. Uh, and that's what we're listening in for. We're expecting to see far more arrests. We're expecting to see stronger security for people across the political spectrum, uh, you know, on both sides of the aisle. Anyone, and we've seen people, you know, the police tend to uh, heighten security also for Bollywood stars, Salman Khan particularly, who's very close to Baba Siddiqui, who himself has received a lot of threats from the Lawrence Bishnoi gang. Um, all of these people will probably receive better and hopefully, hopefully better security to keep them safer. Um, but like I said, in the meantime, everyone who lives, and so do I, uh, live in the city of Mumbai, feeling deeply uneasy about the law and order situation because Mumbai has not, we have, the city, the city has a history of gang warfare and, uh, you know, the underworld, which was dismantled by the police in the early and the mid 90s. And we haven't seen too much of it since then. This is eerily similar to what we'd experienced as a city back in the 90s. It doesn't feel good. Okay, Faye D'Souza, really good to talk to you. Thanks very much. Thank you for having me, Krish.